So my plan is to turn this wheel into this wheel. And as you've probably seen from the title, they are aero disc plates that I've put on. Now, this is probably not to everyone's taste, but I wanted to see what we could do and how we could, we could make these wheels, because I've seen them on cars. This, this was genuinely inspired by cars, and I can show you exactly what inspired me. This is Tom's RX-7 build, a track-focused dream machine that will be sporting these rotiform aero discs. And the way we're going to be recreating these for my bike is using the power of 3D scanning. So it is my turn to start doing some scanning and I'm going to be scanning this CB125 wheel and I've got to add some dots on for points of reference. Apparently if it's a symmetrical shape it just helps kind of keep everything in line and in check. So, and let's see what we can do. Here's our secret weapon, baby powder. It helps mat up the surface as so scanners don't like black or shiny surfaces. Now that's covered the wheel nicely, we can start the scanning process. That looks like a wheel that's been scanned fully. Tell you what, it's a weird process, but quite rewarding when you get it right. Even like the lettering on the tire. He has picked it up. That's nuts. It's mind blowing how it all works. I'm still new to this and I have a lot to learn, but for now, let's get the tires removed. Right, let's get this tire off. Oh, <laughs> pretty flat anyway. Right, let's break the bead. I have a bead breaker here. What am I doing? So now we actually have to figure out where to start. I didn't want to start welding anything to the wheel or drilling holes because it's just not safe. But whilst looking at the scan of the wheel, I noticed I could potentially use the gaps between the spokes to fit a spacer that can't spin in either direction. And with that glorious thought, I had a plan. This was the birth of my aero disc idea. So we have the AeroDiscs laser cut, fresh from the cutters. They are just two mil aluminium, nothing crazy. Um, but yeah, I like the design. It's nice, simple, really simple to make. And as you can see, they're not too dissimilar to the real thing. Yeah, real happy. So the next thing we need to look at is actually mounting these to the wheel. And the way we're gonna do that is using my favorite thing, 3D printing. Using the spokes of the wheels, we're going to print some little inserts that we can thread from both directions, clamping together through the wheel, creating basically a wheel sandwich. Delicious. So yeah, let's get that started. With a fresh idea comes the energy to pursue it. Whilst the discs are getting cut, I'm going to start preparing the wheels for powder coating. I've printed these in carbon fibre so they can withstand the forces the wheels will put them through. There's an M6 thread printed through that you can see me cleaning up with a tap. I am super happy with how this is looking. Uh, I've only got the two bolts into now just to get it kind of on, just to see how everything lines up and everything lines up spot on. Disc is on both sides and it looks so good. Now we've got to this point, we can take it to the powder coaters, go and get it all coated and we can then get the tires fitted. I think this just looks absolutely awesome. Like I know there's some wheels out there with the plates, but I've not seen it done in this style. Let me know what you think down below. What do you think to this idea? Yeah, let's go and get these powder coated.
just want to say thank you very much to the guys at Project Powder Coating. They've done such a awesome job. I mean, just look how these aero discs look, man. Honestly, they are awesome in this bright white. So yeah, next thing we need to look at is actually getting the bearings put back in the wheels. We can also get these fitted. But uh, the next main thing is looking at tires. So some of you may love it, some of you may hate it, but we've got some new tires here, some, uh, what are they called? Are these called Barry Stories? Carry Stones, which as you can imagine are a Chinese brand for Bridgestone. But the reason we went with these, the pattern, I just wanted this old school dog tooth tread pattern and I'll tell you what, it was very expensive to find some tyres in this size um, other than the, these ones. So these were still very expensive, but these were pretty much the only option I had if I wanted this style of tyre. But yeah, I'm really excited to see what the new school versus old school looks like. With this tyre and that type of wheel, I think it's going to look absolutely mental. So yeah, let's get the final fit up together. So that's the easy bit we've done. We've got the new bearings in and the new seals and stuff. Now I'm going to mask up as much of the wheel as I can because we're going to put them back on the tire machine and try not to scratch them. Now, that was an absolute pain to fit. I'm gonna say, do not purchase these tires because of how hard that was to put on. I do think they look pretty damn good. <gasps> oh, let's give you a little clean, sir. It's been a while. So the time has come to connect disc to wheel, where I can see if my vision lives up to reality compared to what I had in my head. The only thing to do now is to get them on. So, that is the first part done, as you can see. And if I've done my math right, these should just slide on in. Wish me luck. Oh, yes! I am so happy with how this has turned out, honestly. It's so much better than I expected. And I think this kind of like mixture of like new school versus old school kind of just comes into its own. Before you say anything, yes, I am going to drill a little hole for the, uh, the valve. Still got the other wheel to build up, but I just wanted to share this with you. I wanted to show you the vision I had. And I think this is gonna look so good on the CB125. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you think. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you look forward to the next part. And as always, I shall see you in the next video. Peace.